I will have my practitioner hat on today. Uh, okay, this one. Uh, from the start, our office has worked in a collaborative manner and we are a cooperative. We own ourselves. The office started in 1951 and today we are over, over 700 uh, team members. And I would like to describe some cultural and climatic circumstances that have formed uh, the Swedish approach to sustainability. Traditionally, uh, there is a closeness and a certain care to nature uh, in our culture. We in Sweden always had legal rights of access on private land. Everyone has the right to go and walk and trek on everyone's land. And the tough climate, and which is today hard to believe, uh, the poverty in Sweden until early last century, has put hard demands on good construction and thorough craftswork in order for people to be able to live here at all. The close relation to nature is still present in the culture, and these images are from an ambitious Swedish state initiative uh, to make the natural preserve parks accessible for recreation and as learning environments for the public. And both these um, buildings are designed by us. Uh, since modernity hit Sweden in the early 20th century, this thoroughness, these concerns about quality and about nature have become institutionalized and part of the system, with lots of regulations and lots of authorities looking after them. Uh, the design of this kitchen from White's first uh, project, a residential area in Örebro, was partly a result deriving from the Swedish Domestic Research Institute that studied every single move of the Swedish housewife in order to create the regulations for a perfect kitchen. <laughs> and the motto of this uh, project was, you are uh, welcome to play in my backyard. And that also says something about the office. Uh, it has always had a strong focus on the common realm. Uh, white work and have always been working with a strong focus to improve the quality of life. Uh, for us that means both social and ecological responsibility uh, as the point of departure for the design. Uh, we always work in interdisciplinary teams with landscape architects, interior designers uh, and environmental experts and social anthropologists uh, within the office. Uh, since 2003, uh, this building is our Stockholm office, where we are about 300 uh, team members at the, the moment. Uh, the building is a part of the Hammarby Sjöstad development, as described before, and is a homemade project that represents our values in practice. Uh, to design our own working environment was a huge and educational challenge. Uh, the overall aim was to create an energy efficient, sustainable building with technical systems as part of the architectural expression. The vision was a flexible open plan with, with efficient daylighting, a good indoor climate using thermal mass uh, to even out differences between day and night, good acoustics, low energy use by using on-site free energy and the use of healthy materials. And from white, uh, we represented the client, the architect, the landscape architect, the interior architect, the project manager, and the environmental specialist. And in this case, uh, in addition, also the tenant. And we were working together from the start. The aspect of generality uh, was an important issue here. The goal was to create a long-term sustainable building, flexible enough to handle the rapid development uh, and need for elasticis elasticity within the office. And the strategic uh, must provide a building that could last for a long time, at least for 100 years. This part we call society tide. Parts that constitute uh, the supporting structure must also have a long life before changes become relevant. Uh, these parts are called building tide. Uh, the catchword in design here is therefore generality. And the intervals uh, between rebuilding the activity tide parts can be as short as 5 to 15 years. These parts include interiors, walls, ceilings and installations. 
And here the catchword is flexibility. And I would say generality is what gives the framework within which flexibility can be used. The technical systems are part of the long-term structural architecture and the floor plans, plans are uh, flexible to furnish uh, in a way that, that suits the ongoing projects at the office. And the strict idea of the different building components according to their lifespans and their general versus flexible capacity guided the design. Uh, and uh, also to have this idea of being able to disassemble uh, the components in the end of the lifespan. Uh, a general structure built uh, out of concrete with, with a very long lifespan provides as much flexibility as possible. And heating and cooling. The system is adapted to the specific site by using free energy from the Hammarby uh, Canal uh, just outside our office. And water pipes uh, are integrated in the concrete slabs and the thermal mass in the structure is activated and heats or cools the office by the exposed uh, concrete. And ventilation in this building is only for fresh air. Uh, and it's distributed with low pressure for uh, low energy uh, use and also for good acoustics. All electricity and computer technology is distributed through the installation floor for totally flex total flexibility in terms of uh, furnishing. And the interior is made out of wood to give warmth to the interior as well as being a renewable material. The glass facade uh, with a low U-value has a sunscreen device, uh, an external sunscreen device, that is used when the risk for overheating occur, as well as giving an extra insulation layer uh, towards the cold night sky during the winter. The technical systems are part of the architectural expression, as well as the architecture is part of uh, the systems, a sustainable integrated approach. And the office uh, has been adapted and refurnished several times since we moved in. And from being 100 persons 2003, we are now 300 persons in the building. Uh, and the general structure has proven its flexible capacity. The, uh, the ambitions in the uh, environmental programs that we wrote in, in the initial phase are fulfilled with a low energy use based on renewable sources, where the water energy gives free heating and cooling to the building. And the success of the project was carried out through an interdisciplinary integrated design process, where all the prerequisites of the environmental effects were raised early on in the project's work. And also we formulated clear goals for the design very early on in the initial phase. And the most critical phase of a project is the startup. Uh, and uh, in this phase is also where we have the most possibility to give the project a sustainable direction, to analyze the impact of, on the surroundings, to use the use of energy and resources, building materials and demands for indoor climate at the very beginning of the project is essential to carry out uh, a sustainable design, which is far too difficult task for one single profession to handle. So an interdisciplinary team is necessary to identify what prerequisites affect the design in an early stage. Uh, and to work in an integrated and communicative manner throughout the whole project. Uh, and to be able to conduct such an interdisciplinary working method, you need to have a controlled process. We work through four defined phases, where the definition phase is the ex to examine all possibilities, the express phase to formulate the goals, and the explore phase is the actual design phase, when we test what kind of design that answers to the goals. And the conclude phase is super important and is to reflect and learn from the process. But a building is not only a working environment, it's also part of the city and the Hammarby Sjöstad neighborhood, uh, where we as an architect's office try to contribute to the broader context um, by, for example, using a roof as a testbed for ecosystem services. A green facade test is also standing there at the moment. And we are also testing out different photovoltaic installations. 
but we also open up the building for public events uh, and seminars uh, to create a dialogue with the everyday user of the city to stimulate a strong involvement from citizens as part of our design process. This dialogue will contribute to our knowledge on how to design our future and livable cities. Uh, and now I will shortly talk about three urban design projects that we are, uh, have on the table at the moment. And as architects, uh, we deal with the relationship between form, function and performance. And that relationship is just so rich in cities. Cities can hinder us, but they can also support us. Uh, the 29th of October 2012, the Hurricane Sandy hit the Far Rock Peninsula, uh, destroying thousands of homes and damaging complete neighborhoods. It made us realize that our cities are especially vulnerable, vulnerable to natural disasters caused by the climate change, and how to restore the community, and how to prepare it for unknown potential natural disasters in the future. Our vision is to create an urban design for the community uh, through a series of small, affordable and smart interventions uh, to create a model which is resilient and anti-fragile. All design components are multifunctional, supporting both the ecological resilience of the area as well as strengthen the social aspects of the urban realm to create a robust and resilient community that can adapt to an unknown future. Our approach in the winning proposal was to build a strong community that has been neglected for a long time by creating uh, public spaces, affordable houses, mixed use and vertical living as a design principle. And the community must not settle for a return to the past, but instead adapt and actively improve conditions, both for this generation and for those to come. And with an integrated design approach, uh, the ecological interventions strengthen the social spaces to, to improve the community's resilience. Small means and great ends was our motto, uh, and by that we mean there is not one major solution that fits all. It is by small means to achieve great ends. We believe uh, in socio-ecological urban design, uh, where a robust urban structure and good connections support integration and optimization of the human and ecological flows. That's the framework which provides flexibility, diversity and adaptation over time for an attractive, livable and resilient urban life, now and in the future. But in order to function, cities are completely dependent on their hinterlands. In the southern town of Sweden, Lund, the expansion of the city and its academic world-leading facilities, the conflict between urbanization and Sweden's most fertile uh, agricultural land uh, is a huge challenge. And the goal is to design the city so it supports us uh, and become the hotbed for social networks, to design the city for meetings between people in the public realm with good microclimate, to create the best physical prerequisites for necessary knowledge development, which seems to a, play a key role in our, our transformation to a more, more robust society. And can we strengthen the ecosystems at the same time as we develop urban environments? With a dense and livable urban form, as well as an adaptable and reversible building typology, the goal is to be able to restore the farmland of Lund in the future. Um, Together with an effective high-rise greenhouse, we can partly compensate for the loss of the productive farmland. Uh, Kiruna, this is the last project that we show you, uh, is an industrial town in the very, very north of Sweden. The city has a symbiotic relationship with the mine as its primary economic resource. But the extraction is digging even deeper into the earth and encroaching eastward towards the city. The scenario shares similarities with a dystopian science fiction tale. The city of Kiruna has to move, and can you move a city, taking into account the intricate relationship between form and function in cities, between the physical streets and buildings and the life they support. And how do you do? How do you move a city? And can uh, the identity of Kiruna survive uh, as these eight seasons 
shown on the pictures considered by the inhabitants of Kiruna. We started uh, the Kiruna dialogue among and with the citizens to provide a valuable input and well-founded direction to long-term planning. By engaging with people who normally don't participate in the formal consultation processes, we are given vital intelligence of present needs and future opportunities. We have found that Kiruna is a subarctic city where people value outdoor life highly and desire public spaces and buildings that respond to the subarctic condition. Kiruna is to build in 20 years what other cities do in 100 or 700 years or more to create a blended and lively city center. This is one of the greatest challenges. And one key tool here is co-presence, co-use and co-location. Employing the local knowledge of a place is a cunning way to inform the design. And in Kiruna, the interplay between city and nature responds to the collective need for a compact city with meeting places, as well as the expressed desire to live with nature on the doorstep. A key strategy in the master plan for the new Kiruna is an ambition to recycle, rebuild and reclaim building materials from the former city in a build-it-yourself facility called the portal. Uh, the dialogue will also continue during the long process of moving the city. And the Biennale idea from our winning competition proposal is now actually discussed for real. Uh, to use this huge and unusual uh, urban project for research, art and discussions about the ongoing global uh, urbanization, identity, as well as the future of the livable cities for all. Uh, we extended the task in our proposal to look even further into the future. A city isn't finished after 20 years, and the mining activities can go on for another 100 years. To look beyond the finished pro project is essential to understand the effect of what, our, uh, what we are doing today has on future generations. We have recently opened our studio in Kiruna to be able to be on site and continue our dialogue with uh, the experts of Kiruna, the people living there. Our studio emulates the recycling idea uh, of the Kiruna portal by showcasing uh, recycled and uh, reuse of materials. The new office occupies a vacant store in the Kiruna current city center. Objects that have been locally sourced or donated by residents, including furniture and housewares, have been retrofitted uh, with new elements uh, to alter or improve their functionality. And the object's historical legacy links the studio with the emerging character of the new city. As well as reducing material consumption, uh, this allows for the preservation of artifacts from the city that would otherwise have been lost and which embody both the culture and the identity of Kiruna. Moving the city is, of course, a huge challenge uh, and one that provokes both anxiety and anticipation among the citizens of Kiruna. As well as function as a workspace, the new studio acts as a community centre, welcoming the public for informal coffee mornings, hosting events and exhibitions. And rather than imposing one style in, uh, in all situations and climates, we are constantly seeking the unique potential of the context as a starting point for an architectural idea. We are seeking an understanding of what that particular urban place can have. The desires and possibilities of what it can become directly leads into the adaptive process of designing uh, a sustainable urban environment that adapts to the climate. Thank you.